Gentlemen, my name is Justin Mark, international dating coach and relationship expert. In this video, I want to talk to you about the five signs that indicate that you should end a relationship. All right, bro, you find yourself in these interesting relationship dynamics. Maybe it's a short-term relationship, like a fuck buddy, your friends with benefits. Maybe it's a long-term relationship. Well, almost every single relationship that you're going to find yourself in in your entire life it has a beginning, a middle, and an end, okay? Every relationship, friendships, intimate relationships, every relationship will end at some point. You might be friends with someone for life, and then they die, right? Life is about being unattached, okay? We live... And an experience that is always fucking changing. And it sucks because you meet this beautiful woman, you fall deeply in love, you have these emotions, you care about her, you want to take care of her, you want to buy her food, you want to take her out, you want to take her on adventures, you want to introduce your friends. And then you start feeling that something is wrong. In this video, we're going to talk about five things that indicate you should end a relationship. And the first one is red flags. You never want to ignore a red flag, okay? There's so many red flags out there, but if you find that something pops out as a red flag, it's usually a good indication of you and this person are not compatible. You aren't. And so you probably should end the relationship dynamic. And you don't want to end the relationship dynamic because of one red flag. You don't want to be in a position where you're just ending the relationship just because of any other reason. You might even find yourself in causing relationships and you end relationships prematurely. Maybe you have uh, avoidance, detachment, personality style of relationship dynamics. So you find yourself in relationships and you always find that you have commitment issues and then you want to end the relationship just because of this reason or that reason. I'm not saying that's what a red flag is, but I'm saying a red flag such as something that like passes your personal boundaries. Red flags, you don't ever want to ignore them ever, ever. You never want to end a relationship just based on one red flag, but you also don't want to ignore them. Okay. So let's talk about some of these red flags. Uh, here's a great one. You don't want to turn a hoe into a housewife. And I truly mean this. It, it's not to say, oh, Justin's misogynistic. And he's calling girls hoes. No, that's not what I'm doing here. It, it's more so you don't want to find someone who's in a very promiscuous time of their life, who is in a very experimental time of their life where they're having a lot of white stands and having a lot of like sleeping around because they're trying to find themselves. You don't want to make that person your partner. And the reason for that, wh whether you're a girl watching this video or a guy watching this video, the reason for that is because they're going to end up cheating on you. They're going to end up hurting you. And so if someone's in a very experimental period of their life, the logical thing to do is not date them monogamously. Don't enter that relationship with them monogamously. So that's probably reason number one, if they're very, very promiscuous, okay? Number two uh, is if they're not someone you could bring home to your mother. You know what's funny? I remember hanging out with a girl and she kind of mentioned, I can't wait to meet your mom. And I had just naturally burst out laughing. I can't remember which girl this was. It was it was one of my ex-girlfriends, okay? And I just remember like laughing my ass off because I was thinking, I'm like, I literally said this to her. I'm like, you're never gonna meet my mother. Because instinctually, you know, you fucking know. When you're dating a person, you know, could you bring this person around your mother? I will date tons of women but I will not just bring any girl to my mother. I've pretty much only brought a couple girls home, really. And I've dated hundreds of girls. I've been on probably thousands of dates, okay? Not an exaggeration. It's probably like two girls I brought home to my mother. And so you know. And so if you wouldn't bring her to your mother, I'm not saying to end the relationship, but I'm saying you know that this isn't a serious relationship and you shouldn't take it that seriously. If this is not a quality of a person you can bring to your mother, then you already know what the relationship dynamic is from the get-go. Here's another sign that indicates if you should end a relationship. If she doesn't get along with your friends or the people around you, your friends and family, if your dating partner doesn't get along with the people close to you, then she's not a good fit for you. And the reason for that is the people around you, your friends, your family, the people who care about you, they know you the most. They probably know you better than you know yourself, okay? 
I was hanging out with my uh, best friend slash roommate, Alfredo. Love the guy. He's fucking family to me. We've been friends for almost 10 fucking years. And this guy knows me almost better than I know myself. He's seriously, he literally does. And the crazy thing is he saw me enter a relationship to it dying and ending. And he noticed a lot of my behavior and he knows me better than I know myself. And he, it's funny because the girl I was dating started messaging him and he didn't even want to show me the messages because he knew it's just going to cause me to have anxiety after this person's already left my life. And so it was such good advice to not even have me see her texting my, my, my roommate because at the end of the day, it's not going to add any value because he knew me better than I know myself. Now, what's funny about this is your friends probably know you better than you know yourself. Your close family, the people you spend the most time, they know you better than you know yourself. If your partner doesn't see eye to eye with them, and doesn't get along with them, there's a reason for that. You and her are not compatible. You're not as compatible as you think, okay? And you should never, ever, ever choose your dating partner over your friends or family, ever. It's very important because your friends and family have your back. They have your fucking back. Your dating partner might not always have your best interest in mind. Seriously, look at how many relationships where people get manipulated. Look at how many marriages where one of the partners just gets completely abused or manipulated. And it's really, really dangerous. And you can find yourself in these horrible, horrible experiences through dating. You can also, you also can find yourself in these amazing, amazing relationships. So if your partner doesn't get along with your close friends and family, it's probably time to pull the plug, seriously. Okay, something to consider. If your dating partner has a high body count, if you're dating a woman who has a high body count, I highly advise you to run. I've dated many, 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 many women, okay? I've probably been with over 20 to 25 virgin women, okay? I've Yes, I've taken probably 20 to 25 women's virginities, okay? And a lot of my girlfriends were virgins, okay? We had Natty, you know, we had the, the one that should not be named. We had Vanessa. We had a lot of these women who were virgins. And what I found is the women who were virgins ended up being a lot better girlfriends than the ones that weren't. Now, the ones that weren't, maybe they had more experience with dating, but they weren't as loyal. And the whole point is if a woman has a very high body count, I'm not talking about like over 10, I'm talking about like over 50, okay? Maybe anywhere from 50 to 100, that is a high body count. Uh, a mid-range body count, in my opinion, would be like between 20 and 30. Between 30 to 50 is probably like, it's, it's a little bit high, but it's not that high. But anything over like 50 is very high. Okay. It's ideal to date a woman with a lower body count under 15, under 10, if you can, under five, if you can. Okay. And the reason for that is a woman who's a little bit older and mature and has her shit together, has a career together, but she's only been with like one to five guys, maybe even one to three guys. And they're all, all the guys she's been with are like ex-boyfriends. That is going to be your ideal dating partner. That is going to be your ideal girlfriend. And because of her lack of promiscuity, the chance of your relationship working out very well and being very healthy is going to be a lot higher. Okay, so avoid women with a high body count. The last thing is if you find yourself in a toxic relationship dynamic, what you should start doing is you should start seeking support of friends and family. It's almost like you want to self-sabotage the relationship. And here's the crazy thing. You might perceive it to be self-sabotage, but it's probably a very healthy thing to do. The best option for you would be to seek help. If you feel that your relationship is becoming toxic, and I'm not just talking about abuse and things like that. And yes, if, if it's at a point where you and your partner are abusing each other in any way, shape or form, you should fucking have ended that relationship a long time ago. But I'm talking about if you're even having unhealthy behaviors, like you're breaking up and getting back together, if you find you're fighting a lot, it is way past the point of you and this partner needing to break up. What you must do is you must reach out to friends and family. You must let them know what's happening and you must start seeking support from others. You must start seeking support outside of your relationship and use the help of others. Don't be scared to ask for help and transition out of that relationship. It is very, very, very important. If you find that you're in a position where your relationship is becoming toxic, it's time to leave. It's time to break up, okay? It's time to come do a boot camp with me, okay? My name is Justin Mark. I've been teaching dating, relationships, and social dynamics for about a decade. I run these coaching programs called boot camps in my home city of Toronto, Canada, and I want to help you. If you ever want to learn this stuff, you can actually just go to justinmark.com, schedule a call with me, and we'll end up working together, okay? Justinmark.com, I will literally call you 
And if you qualify for our coaching programs, we'll have you fly out to Toronto. Come work with us here in person. Come throw parties with me at my penthouse, go to nightclubs, go to bars, go to nighttime social venues, and I'll teach you a mastery of soul skills, social names, and how to meet people, and build healthy relationships, build a healthy social life, and build an amazing, amazing life, and use all these social skills to help you advance massively in your career. Okay, justinmark.com, I'll see you there. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and message me on Instagram, drunkjustin2. That's my Instagram, message me, and we'll get in touch right there, okay? And if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe. Click the bell notification so you're notified of new videos. We'll talk to you very soon in a new video. I know you guys love these videos. I know you love this content. So I highly recommend you check out our Wingman podcast. The Wingman podcast, it's on Spotify. It's on YouTube, wingmanpodcast.com. It's, it's an amazing podcast I've created with my first wingman, Matt Levine, all about dating, relationships, uh, and just lifestyle. It's really fucking awesome. I think you guys will love it. Go to wingmanpodcast.com. Dot com. Guys, my name is Justin Mark, international dating coach, relationship expert. Love you guys. I will talk to you soon in a new video. Peace out.